Welcome back everyone, CUBE's live coverage here as we wind down day two of VMware Explore 2024. We're going to break down the analyst angle. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, ZS, and Rob Streche is here. Um, guys, um, all regulars on the CUBE, CUBE analyst uh, angle, wrap up. Okay, we're in the books for the first official day, Hawk Tan's keynote. Um, obviously, very direct, no, no, very clear, no ambiguity as Dave said. What's your guys' thoughts? Zias, we'll start with you. Uh, well, it's a certainly di a different Explorer, right? It's, it's much smaller, the Expo Hall's empty. Uh, Hawk pulled no punches, talked a lot about how old management you know, was too focused on yeah, the Yeah, she said CEO. Yeah. Uh, That's Gelsinger. I, I think, yes. <laughs> and, uh, but it's a, you can tell it's just a different company now, right? This show was used to highlight new products. If you think about the way the keynotes used to go, there were so many new products announced, you couldn't keep up. Right, today there was one major one with VCF and a whole bunch of little ones, and so uh, VMware is no longer a growth company. I don't think they've been a growth company for a while, but at least they were. They're, they're a were, revenue company, they're a cash they're, they're company. Gonna, they're going to be growing profits yeah, yeah. in the next five and, years. Uh, and, and now <laughs> they've really just become a value company and yeah. part of the, the broader Broadcom yeah. suite. And so, um, whether you like the strategy or not, it's worked for Broadcom. I think the focus on the top 5,000 makes sense right now. I think over time what happens is, you know, market leadership ebbs and flows, and so a lot of those top 5,000s will eventually, you think of how many companies from 10 years ago that would have been top 5,000 or aren't anymore, right? And, yeah. but they'll have a hard time capturing new customers as they come up and make the top 5,000, but then, by then Broadcom will be on to the next thing. Yeah. And so, this is just their, yeah. this is their playbook. Well, they got a lot of things they've always had categorically would fall under the, either magic quadrant or some sort of analyst swim lane like networking, yeah. storage, compute. Um, it's never best in class uh, other than the hypervisor. Yeah. Uh, but when you put it all together, th there's some legitimacy to building an integrated, yeah. pre-configured yeah. VCF uh, stack. Right? I mean, he, he said in the keynote today, you basically get AWS on-prem. Now, it was interesting, in, guys, in the analyst session, he was less forceful about it, he was honest. He said. Okay, we're going to take 30, the top 30 services in, the, in AWS and we're going to replicate those. We're not going to do 300, but we're going to basically create a substantially equivalent on-prem experience yeah. to the public cloud. And that's their entire strategy. And you know, I think if, to the extent that they do invest in that roadmap, people are going to stay with it. Why would you rip and replace VMware. All right, you guys I mean, were just at the Hawk Tan um, analyst one-on-one. -on -one. I was here holding price. down the cube. Rob, what's your takeaway yeah. seeing Hawk Tan on the one-on-ones, the one-on-ones of the analysts, and now you're walking around the show, I, doing I, interviews, give yeah. us your hot take. I, I think it's refreshing. I, I think he's refreshing. I think, you know, he tells you what he's going to do and then goes and does it. And he's not afraid, and I think we talked about pivoting being bad and things like that. And I, I think he's not looking to pivot, he's looking to fine tune things as they go along. We've talked with the partners. Uh, one of the interesting things is the partners are actually seeing an uplift in communication, simplicity yeah. with the customers. We're also talking the ones to- ones that are left. Yeah, right. yeah. But, but, but again, I, I think that's, that also gives them focus. That's a feature, not a bug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that gives I mean, them focus. Yeah, by design. And potentially yeah. more revenue. And they're looking at this as a services opportunity. I think Hawk yeah. is really laid out how he wants the partners to act and act with them and how they're going to make their money is the services around it, which is really interesting. Well, we're going to get him on theCUBE um, soon, and, but I will tell, tell you that what I'm learning about him, uh, we haven't interviewed him yet one-on-one, -on -one, um, is that he explains his rationale. I mean, he's not, a, he, so I like that he says, hey, this is what we're going to do, and he's, he's kind of cavalier by not being cavalier about it, but he just says it, but he gives a rationale that's not good business, or I'm doing this because of this. It's just like, it's pretty clear. It's like, yeah. and then it's like, he stops. Yeah. And then, yeah. unless Dave prompts him and says, you know, you know, would you go to the cloud? Well, so the, he was honest about that. I, I asked him. He's authentic. I, I said, you know, because he told a story about how when they brought in VCF, they consolidated everything, and they saved, it was like 50% of the cost. And he also said, we only spend at Broadcom 1% of our revenues on IT. He goes, some companies spend 10%. I don't know why. He goes, well, I got it. 10% is low. Yeah, well, for, yeah. For and so companies. he's basically saying, yeah. those guys are so inefficient, we're yeah. super efficient. And then he said, prior to bringing in VCF, we, uh, we asked the public cloud, so we did an RFP, and he said, everything we got was, we said, two and a half to four X more expensive than what they were running at the time. So I asked him, listen, forget you own VMware for a second. If 
the cloud guys came in with an equal cost. Would you have chosen the public cloud? And if not, why not? I thought he was going to give me the marketing answer. Here's what he said. He said, basically, yes, when you think about the public cloud, they take away all this headache. You, you see, I just can't sleep at night. I'd give the headache to them if the costs were the same, but obviously the costs are not no, the same. And that's a key thing. driver. Yeah. Uh, they're going to get value out of the lower pri in, you know, price of VMware uh, product now, because prior to Broadcom, it was artificially lowered so people could sell stuff on top of it. Right. Well, EMC, Dell, HPE, and they're like, get out of here. The question yeah, is, can they, can they match the pace of innovation yeah. with the public cloud players, right? I think the answer there is no. Yeah, right. They're, they're not going to no. answer the pace, uh, match the pace of innovation, even though they have a great balance sheet, but they're not going to invest the same way that the public yeah. cloud. So how does that work? So if you're one of those top customers, yeah. you're relying on that innovation to stay ahead of the competition, right? But, I, but I talked to one, uh, one of the customers, one of their top customers on their advisory board, yeah financial services, and we, we talked about it because they're doing containers, they're using Tanzu and stuff like that, but they're also right next to it, they have EKS, and they have AKS in Azure, and they have GKE in Google, and they had uh, <laughs> OpenShift, and we, we talked through how, how does this really change what you're doing? His, his answer was, we actually had already gone full stack in that VMware environment already, and when we went to things like vSAN, we saw cost savings already. So I think for those customers that have a, and I think there's going to be uh, islands of automation, we're back to islands of automation, yeah. is basically <laughs> where we're back to, and I think you're going to see that across all these customers yeah. where what we were talking about yesterday, hey, I'm not going to throw my mission critical you know, workloads off. Here's what, I, here's what I would say on the innovation questions, because yeah, that's a good one, right? Because you have iteration with the cloud, you have continuous improvement with new stuff coming in. NVIDIA and uh, Kirsch was just on, it's like, look at, they think Apple iPhone's a better model. Go iOS on premise and let the app sit on top so you harden it. You keep it, uh, you know, <laughs> NVIDIA. Yeah. You know, and like, like, I can see that play. Well, in some ways for Amazon v has to innovate. For VMware, if they can be a fast follower, right, and so, AWS and Microsoft and Google, they, they throw lots of stuff at the wall, some sticks, some doesn't, but they're yeah. spending all the R&D money. Yeah. If you can then follow it at a pace that's close enough that you let them do the R&D, yeah. <laughs> figure out what's right going to stick. They don't have to keep yeah. pace, right? And so what, but one of the areas they're not going to innovate as much on as the public cloud guys is the data stack. So yeah. We've talked about this a lot. But I had and somebody on, and it, this was interesting, and I missed this earlier today, and I, I think, I, I agree, I don't think they will innovate as fast or as deep on that stack, but one of the things I missed in all of the announcements earlier is they talked about Broadcom Atomic, and Atomic is setting up all the data pipelines from SaaS, from... Uh, Internally. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's part of, it's something they ship. It's, a, yeah. it's actually a product that was... That VMware part, ships. Yeah, it, it's part of the Broadcom it's part of their Agile Operations Division, which was so the software partially, division. So, yeah, okay, software. Yeah, 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 right. So what they did is they actually have that as part of it. Now it's not plumbed, I asked, it wasn't plumbed to private AI, and Serge, who's the GM of that division, was really clear on, hey, but this is where we see things going. It doesn't necessarily solve the data issue, where, and definitely it, there needs to be innovation there, so I, I, again, I look at it and go, will they push in? Will they partner? How will they get this? But it's, you know, it reminds me of some of the stuff that Fivetran does and some of the others that do those pipelines to get the data to where it needs to be. Now, you know, again, having Postgres and MySQL as like kind of the answers, you know, and you know, Postgres from a, you know, a, 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 uh, a you know, vector database, you know, PG vector kind of thing. I, I don't think that's the answer, but I think what they're looking at is they had to get some of the blocking and tackling done before they can push in, because Chris Wolf is, has been very, <laughs> in another analyst session, was very adamant about their innovation and where they're innovating in this space, and I think we'll have him on tomorrow right, to so, continue that. It, it, I, let me say it this way. Within their swim lane of VCF, they will innovate. There's yeah. no question about it. They're not going to build you know, satellites, and they're not going to build Q <laughs> up the stack. They're not going to build the equivalent of Microsoft Fabric, or a, 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 a governor purview, a governor of governors. That's not where they're going to innovate, like the cloud guys. So that's what I meant by 
they're not going to do that type of innovation. But when it comes to infrastructure, he said it, we're going to pick, we're going to cherry pick the top 30 services. And to, you, to your point, yeah. Zias, we're going to be a fast follower or maybe not even a fast follower. We're going to be a good enough follower, but we're going to invest. And that's their strategy and it's so, a good one. So having NVIDIA on also with Chris also gives you a little bit of a tell sign. Um, love the love fest on there. And by the NVIDIA, Menavir is great on theCUBE. Um, the master class. But what's interesting is, HPE, Antonio Neri just posted on LinkedIn about their quote, agent builder technology too. And quoting the uh, NVIDIA press release, Dave, it says Cisco, Dell Technologies, HPE, and Lenovo are offering full stack NVIDIA accelerated infrastructure and solutions to speed NIM agent blueprint deployment. Was it again? Dell, Cisco, Dell, HPE, Lenovo. It's no VMware. Yeah. Yeah, all the, all the OEMs. Yeah. Well, those are the because those are, their play, those are their OEMs. Yeah, you yeah. could actually all run those. VMware on that. Okay, right? so, so those, those are the guys building, yeah. building okay, engineered systems. Okay, so they're OEMs. They're okay. building engineered systems. I thought I had a scoop there, but I misread it. Good, good call out. <laughs> all right, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's infrastructure, hardware. Yeah, but yeah. we had, my, we, my, Matt of here was on with us at, HP. at HP Discover yeah, back in right. Barcelona last year, uh, back in December. With and Neil, right? Yeah, and I think part of it was, you know, he always, he, they're at the. They're seeing things like they were. He yeah. was talking about just before, before it's happening. And I think to the point about agent building and th the blueprints, yeah. how to make it easy. I think this is one of the places, and we kind of talked about it, where it'll be interesting to see if VMware sticks with that as the top of their stack for private AI, or if they have multiple different offerings inside that. And I think that that to me will be very telling. Is yeah. do they go? multi-vendor in that part of the stack. That's a good point. I mean, we let, I think Chris Wolf has a right to be excited because it's an innovation layer on top of the hardened platform. And so I want to get your thoughts, guys, on the analysis of the VCF NVIDIA. And then, so that's one thread I want to pull. And the other one, Rob, we talked about this yesterday um, after the show, what is Pernina's job with Tanzu to get the attach rates up on VCF for in Kubernetes, got a runtime over here and containers. So, I'm starting to see that they might have a good play, a little kind of little interplay going on with VCF. If you're, got a, if you're a VMware customer, you don't need to go. You can stay with Tanzu. So interesting play on Tanzu. So KubeCon's coming up. So yeah. VCF, what's the analysis, guys, with Nvidia? And then what about KubeCon coming up? Does VMware steal the show? Are they fumble that or what? Are, uh, you I know, mean, look at you know, VMware. I think they might fumble it if they don't get their. VMware together. has been historically very Intel heavy and now they're going to be like Dell. They're going to lean toward NVIDIA. Uh, but I'd like to see Project Monterey, yeah. you know, get life. It's Intel-based, you know, I mean, NVIDIA, they're buying DPUs from NVIDIA. And so that is a piece of the infrastructure that I think is ripe for innovation. Right now it's very NSX heavy. The good I, news I wonder is, if Project Monterey is a stalking horse. That, that the, good, the good news is Project Monterey, my understanding is, is alive. I don't know if it's well, but it's alive and it has a roadmap that's being invested in. And so I want to learn more about that. That question came up in the analyst Q&A this morning though with all the- With Monterey? With, no, no, or, the Intel versus NVIDIA. Yeah. Uh, with, with all the uh, GMs. Um, one of the analysts asked, said, well, you're big into NVIDIA, but you've had this long partnership with Intel. There's other you know, GPU manufacturers. And the answer basically was, we're just going to do what customers are asking. They're asking for NVIDIA. But, but so if, if, if you don't have, but if, yeah. but if you don't have a nitro-like capability, your costs are going to be higher, your flexibility is going to be lower, and you're not going to be as competitive with what Nitro has with AWS, or AWS has with Nitro, and Google and Microsoft both have uh, you know, competitive, call it competitive, uh, alternatives to that. They have their own sort of virtualization layer that gives them enclaves and better yeah. security and all that good stuff. And I think, I think Project Monterey is strategic and, and important. I don't know, I think, I think Intel's got a lot to prove. And, uh, so well, that's what I'm saying. It could if be a stalking have, horse too, if Dave. You have, if you have, I want to come back to that, but if you have, if you have an, a Nitro-like capability, then you can bring in Intel, you can bring in any ARM-based system, you can bring in you know, other new stuff that comes out from RISC-V. What, what do you mean as by a stalking horse? Well, I mean, NVIDIA is going <laughs> to run the table with, as the next-gen platform. Intel, you got to keep a thread open to keep NVIDIA in check if you don't want to make sure. I mean, they, they're arms dealers right now. Well, so that's like, what Monterey and, and, would do and, and, inf it, and inference. But an equivalent, equivalent. I'm just what I'm saying. Like, but equivalence to Nitro gives them that, and, and they don't have it today, I mean, I guess, they kind of have it, 
Well, well Nvidia, an Nvidia has some some pieces like that, and, but it's not inter heavily integrated with VMware, and it's not VMware, so right? You know, and I, they can't use it as a stalking but, horse. But but to put to well, Kubernetes, for instance, on small devices, Edge, other places, yeah. Intel could be the the reference architecture for that inference. So to, well, it is to, right now, it's an Intel <laughs> F, uh, FPGA. Ahead, so to that exact point, because I think we were talking about it this morning, I think the edge is where you're going to see them push. And I think this, to your point on KubeCon, and they need to lean in. Like today, they announced Rally Anywhere. And having used Rally Dev a long time ago from an agile perspective uh, for doing product, you know, uh, product management and tracking and you know things of that nature. I think what's interesting is that it kind of ties together with Tanzu, and that there was a, there was a little bit of a threat. It's not integrated or horribly you know straight line to Tanzu, but I think when you start to look at, they do have some chops talking to devs, and I think if they can bring that together with Tanzu and what yeah. they're doing with Spring and other things as well. I think, you know, again, Hawk even talked to this whole, the whole thing around Spring. I, That's what Pivotal gave them. I mean, it's been yeah, a I slog. Mean, I think NVIDIA, I mean, yeah, but. VMware Tanzu, in my opinion, ha Rob, has to go to KubeCon this year, put a major stake in the ground with a flag that says, we are here, we are, big and we're relevant and we're taking care of business. Well, even Hawk well, Ken did call him, he, he kind of said it was more, more flash than reality, than yeah. substance, right? He kind of so did. What was, what was more substance? Tanzu. Yeah, he, he said more flash than substance? Yeah, well, he, he talked to, yeah. He, App no. dev framework. No, no, he, he, well, what he was saying was that the product's not as good as they've said it was, and yeah. old management, which yeah. he likes to call out all, all the time, uh, really <laughs> oversold the capabilities of that product. He he, re, he really made no bones about it. So now, but I you know I think uh, well, uh, here's a, here's the specific so. context. He said so. One of the Forrester I, analysts. I'm surprised by that. One actually. of the wait, wait, let me just let me just clarify. So one of the Forrester analysts uh, said called him out. Said you know Tanzu, you're talking about all this private cloud stuff. Tanzu has a lot of like public cloud and multi cloud capabilities, and that's where he said. It's not well, really, yeah. it's really it's, an application platform. It's just two, two separate products. There's the public cloud piece, and there's the private cloud piece. Yeah. We're focused on the private cloud piece. But and Pernina, he said it wasn't multi-cloud. But, but, but the question it, yeah, was but, all wrong but, because but, it's not multi-cloud. But Pernina said. They run on multiple clouds. But, Pernina, but the point that Pernina made is, look, you would containerize it, you can run it on-prem, you can run it in any cloud. Yeah. Right. So it runs on multiple clouds, it's not a cross-cloud super cloud, yeah. Yeah. like we like to yeah, say. Just like, it's just like multiple you, clouds, not so multi-cloud. Yes, so You can take your license and of he, VCF and go it, to any it, cloud it, and run right. your shit and, there, and, so. And Hoctan uh, doesn't seem to be interested in running stuff in the cloud, although, uh, uh, I think he would be perfectly I mean, fine if, if people want to host it. it if they want to host VMware licenses in the cloud, yeah. why, will he, why would he care? What was it a tell when Paul Turner goes, it's CNCF compliant? Kubernetes platform. What's the tell? Let's explain yeah, what, what. To tell what, about going to KubeCon, and I, I think putting a stake in the ground, I think they don't want to be seen, because it devalues the full stack of VCF if you have 50% of OpenShift running on VMware, which it does today, yeah. instead of yeah. people using the native Kubernetes in there to get people so to So that's what you're saying. That. Yeah. That, that they can now, because native Kubernetes is hard to use, they're making it easier for, for the them. the runtimes and yeah. CCF. And, it's, yeah. and now they're going head to head with OpenShift, Correct. is what you're saying. Okay. They're running native, Got uh, they're running the runtime of Kubernetes in VCF. Right. Okay, so now Tanzu connects to that. So that's a major thing that makes it makes the market. So they don't have to roll over OpenShift in the, in the battles of the wars. Okay, so we and know and, what, we know what the folks, the Red Hat te you know, crowd would say to that, they would poo-poo. They'd say good luck everything. with that. Everything. Yeah. They would That's what they say, They would poo-poo yeah. it. Wait, wait, I want to ask a question. They would poo-poo it and, and basically denigrate it, like, ha-ha, you know, that's not real, you know, open source and managed services and leading edge and modern. Is that a blind spot, yeah, potentially? No, no, for Tanzu it's a blind spot. No, is it, a, is it a blind spot for, for no, Red Hat? I think Red Hat knows exactly what's going on because yes. if I'm Red Hat, this is what I say. Oh. Pat Kelsey announcing they're going to have a public cloud in 2015. Good luck with that. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, that's what I would say. Now, that's not may not be true, but Tanzu's got a legit attach rate opportunity. That's not categorically leading strategy because OpenShift has customers too. So, I'd say OpenShift, welcome to the party, and they have to be better. Yes. They just have to demonstrate that they're better, and they're way ahead. They get year. Remember, remember OpenShift but, fumbled the first two years, and then boom, but snapped it goes in the back, year. It goes back to the innovation thing as well, because think about 
one of the reasons why people use OpenShift is also the, the ecosystem around it of products like Ansible yeah. and you know, Terraform and other stuff that goes on around that. Yeah. And I think that stuff is still missing from a yeah. Tanzu perspective and in, that, in a way. And the ecosystem is one of my concerns here. If you, like I said, if you go to the Expo Hall, the ecosystem is a lot smaller. Obviously from a Broadcom perspective, you want to build it all yourself, but you can't build it all yourself. Right. And, and I am a little concerned that when we come back here next year, the ecosystem is going to completely disappear, and and uh, that's going to that's going to really put them in a box. And you create a lot of competitors where maybe you didn't have them before. I right? think what the ecosystem has to do, and we we John and I, you know, kind of dug on this with some of the you know partner folks here, is they've got to build engineered systems yeah. and bring those to market. Yeah. And and the party of MDF, you you talked about this. The yeah, party of MDF it's over. is over. VMware was basically funding the distribution channel, saying here you go, that's why everybody loved, you know, Chad Sackett, we love yeah. VMware, yes, we're the best. They're funding well, that's, money and they're, people they're and projects. That, they're, they're, they're pulling that plug yeah. and basically saying, look, you got engineered systems, you get your, your ecosystem, your distribution channel to go sell them, we are the best the platform, is, people need this, so if you yeah, want to play. It's a big bet, it's a big bet. That's what you got to well, do. Well, now you got to make sure you are the best platform. What that ecosystem did was it locked everybody Every ecosystem partner built their stuff for VMware first. And then it became a situation where no matter what you were running, it plugged into vSphere, vCenter, and that locked the customer in. And so with that ecosystem going away or getting smaller, it does create more options for customers. And there, I'll tell you something, there are some hopping mad customers out there. Yeah, no doubt. Oh yeah, yeah. and so I, I'm assuming Hawktan's done the math and there's a certain amount of acceptable loss, um, but it's, it, is a, it is a big gamble. If right? you're a sales rep for VMware right now, a sales manager, a sales leadership, you're getting your ass handed to you every day. You probably can't even go near the door. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I'm hearing stories of like, you know, don't even come, it's like, it's like get off the property. So, you know, so like, what, before, before the Q&A with the GMs, I was talking to one of the GMs in the back room, I won't say which one, and he was saying, we were talking about the structure of it and you know, the disruption of the ecosystem, the partner community, it's like, but we still have to deliver our number, right? And you could see sort of the pressure that he was facing that they're disrupting the business like, at a Broadcom level, but he's being held to that number yeah, they're getting rid of sales. They're going to get the commodity, <laughs> commodity dial tone, as Pat Gelsing used to say, make that a very valuable layer, charge for it with subscription, kill perpetual licenses. They just got to get through the knot holes. They don't need a sales rep, just yeah. renewal. You want to keep, it's like, it's like it's like the phone company back in the day. Well, Pay I the mean, bill or we I mean, turn you off. I mean, historically, VMware had you know some strategic accounts with a small number of sales reps on those accounts, maybe one to one even. Yes. And yeah. Yeah. Once you get them into a, an, an ARR, a subscription, well, they're not going to renew until three years, so you better have one to many, because then you're always having action yeah. in the field, as opposed to you know, the perpetual model. Well, it, it changes, you, now you need better customer success to make sure people are using all the stuff yeah. they pay for. Because in a subscription model, if you're paying for 20 different things and you're only using 15, when renewal comes up, we're like, you're like, I didn't use these five things, yeah. so. Well, I think, I, that's, he, I think he said that's yeah. his key metric, yeah. is getting adoption up. Yeah. Right? I mean, having, really a, having a about. platform. Because that's sticky. Yes. He wants yeah. sticky, he yeah. basically yeah, said it. I'm here to basically know. make them sticky, yeah. i.e. lock them in. Well, because they, they can't, raise prices. because switching costs are so well, he's high. He's already done that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they're raising prices because they're killing no, perpetual again, and going subscription. Yeah, yeah. But the ecosystem is not the thousand flowers blooms where everyone's partying. It's going to be smaller, bigger players because if Dell engineers in because they got VX Rail, they're going to make tons of bra uh, cash. Well, Dell's, to your point, hedging its bets because they're saying we're going to do a deal with Nutanix. Yes. And we're going to do VX Rail. But Dell's already signed the contract, they're engineering in. Well, they're doing both. Yeah, it's they got to. Yeah. If you're Dell, you can't steer this down. It's like, it's, you, it's like sit in front of the well, train tracks amazing and to see, playing though. chicken with the trains. Like, I want to lose every time. It's amazing to see, John, because when they own, when Dell owned VMware, they basically shot the Nutanix relationship, sent them over to HPE, and of course now Nutanix is back. Sure, we'll, why not? We'll yeah. take the I, I think there's channel. no question that VMware is going to lose some share, especially once you get outside of that Five thousand. Yeah. Oh, in it's terms of it's customer, yeah, yeah. percent dropping. of customers, it's dropping, it's dropping but, like a rock. But, but but I don't think it matters. But the, but right? it, it's so. it's it's all about the profitability. Yeah. They run the company at a sixty plus percent operating margin. That's unbelievable. Amazon has unbelievable operating margin. Uh, AWS gross margin. A <laughs> operating <laughs> margin. <laughs> AWS is thirty five percent operating margin, which is incredibly profitable. Broadcom's at 
60% 60, 60 I mean that is incredible and they've promised we're going to get back there with VMware and so that's the game that's the that's the scoreboard that's John. guys great way to wrap it up on day two officially day two but it's really day one Rob. what, what day, day is what it day is it I don't know I but I, it was I get Wednesday. multiple <laughs> emails on that all the time <laughs> now Vinny, congratulations on your earnings like this tomorrow <laughs> day one two yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, in all likelihood the penultimate explorer ZS I got to say great to see you I love that vest I got total FOMO I love the <laughs> masters you know it's on my bucket list so oh, come with me you know year. I'm going to come with you next year done deal all right that's wrap up for day two of the cube I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, Rob Strachey, and Zias Carvella here on theCUBE, bringing all the analyst action. Hot insights all day long, bringing you the data from the edge of the network. See you tomorrow.